All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. This is episode 464, and I'm really excited to have my good friend Cheryl Polsky here with me. She is a conscious parenting coach, and she works with parents to help them make better connections with their kids and just make parenting a little bit easier. So welcome, Cheryl. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. So you are going to be one of the speakers at our now digital revolutionizing parenthood conference that's coming up next month. And we are going to talk here a little bit about your topic that you're going to talk about at the conference. So why did you become interested in co-parent issues? Or should we start by saying, by telling my listeners, what is co-parenting for those who don't know? Co-parenting is when parents have separated, divorced, they're no longer living in the same home, and a parenting plan needs to be made. Mm. So and the how, parents need to work together yeah. to raise a child. Beautiful. How did you become interested in co-parenting? Well, I have a 28-year-old daughter, and I was married, and when we were two, my ex-husband and I separated. And back then, it was called joint custody. And um, I wasn't very happy with it, but we went to court, and this is what the judge ordered. And I think if I had known about conscious parenting, I would have done things differently. And what I would like to do is to get a conscious parenting, um, get the word out so that parents can be easier on themselves, either easier on their kids, and more forgiving of the ex-spouse for the purpose of making a better life for your child. That's beautiful. And I think that's such a huge need. There is a there are a lot of divorced and separated families or marriages, I guess. And the kids sometimes get lost in the fallout of all of it and they're the ones who suffer. And so I love that you want to work with parents who aren't getting along necessarily on other issues to help them try to parent effectively their children who need them, who need them. Yes. And so, so what can parents do who are uh, separated or divorced and maybe their relationship is obviously rocky for different reasons? What can they do to help make the transition, the transition easier on their children? Well, often, you know, when people aren't getting along, they're not getting along. So there's a lot of angry and hurt feelings and that often spills onto the children. So a mom might say, if your dad paid his child support, um, dad might say, if your mom took you to this church. And so it's really important to keep adult issues with adults. Mm. And it's also very important for your child to see the ex in a positive light. And even if you don't see positive about the other parent, you know, try to figure out something that's positive. Because the re reality is your child is half of you and half of your ex-partner. And if your partner is, if, if your child sees his mother or his father as bad, as the enemy, not good as, you know, the reality is your child is going to see him himself that way. And we want to avoid that as all, you know, possible. We want our children to feel whole and good about themselves and good about all parts of themselves. You know, um, different cultures, different religions, you know, we want our kids to feel good about themselves. You know, that's the bottom line. That's actually such a beautiful point. I think that a lot of times when we as parents, well, when parents are struggling with co-parenting and they're so angry and hurt at their former significant other over whatever it could be, whatever issues there are, and then they ha have negative feelings towards them and express it around their child, the fact that their child is half them 
and they could internalize that. It's such a good, it's so true that that happens. It's such a good wake up call for parents to remember that you're not just venting or bad mouthing against your ex partner, but you're also kind of saying something negative about your child's other half, the, the other half of their DNA, if they share the same DNA. So it's such a good uh, point that you make. And I hope, I hope that's a real wake up call reminder to parents who are listening, who may be struggling with that issue. You know, and it's really important uh, for parents to take care of themselves, you know, especially when um, they are not with their children and um, the ex partner is with them. And instead of obsessing over what's happening to your child with that parent, um, you can use that time to take care of yourself. Um, if you need to vent, you know, find a therapist, find a friend, find a group, and vent with that person. Um, and it's also a time for the um, non-custodial parent to find new interests. You know, go, go and do things that you never thought you'd be able to do. You know, go away for the weekend. You know, use the time for self-care because that's so important. What great Just advice. take good care of yourself so when your child does come back to you, you are happy and relaxed and you're able and you're able to listen to your child about what happened at their other parents' house with a smile on your face. Even if you're thinking in your mind, oh my God, they did this and they did that. You know, you got to do a little bit of acting there and to have a smile, you know, smile and say, oh my God, how interesting. Yes. Because the negative reaction of the parent is just as bad or worse than what could be happening to your child at the other parent's house. And kids survive. They are durable, they're resilient. Kids absolutely survive. And as kids grow up, they know which parent, you know, they become smart. And they know which parent is a little saner than the other parent. You know, they're not dumb, the kids are gonna see it. But before they see it for themselves, they're not ready. They're not ready to see it until they can see it themselves. That's really smart. Before they see it themselves, they're not ready. Oh my gosh, I love that. What a huge takeaway and a good reminder for parents. I love it. So what would you suggest to a parent who's trying to co-parent with someone who is not on the same page at all and not cooperating at all. Stay as positive as possible. And, you know, tell your child, um, don't say, oh, you have to go with your dad. Mm. You know, say, oh my God, you get to spend time with your dad. I'm sure you're gonna have fun. Or, you know, for the dad to say, you know, you're gonna have a great time with your mom. You know, your mom probably has this and this plan for you. So I'm gonna be missing you. You know, tell your child you're gonna be missing them because you are. But don't let them, don't let, don't, don't put it on them and say, oh, no, I don't know how I'm gonna survive without you. Because mm -hmm. the child needs to be able to be free to come and go. Because as kids grow older, they're gone anyway. They go to friends' houses, they go to activities. So they're coming and going. So you want your child to know that you love them, you're going to miss them, and you have their best interest. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other parent is an important part of their lives. It sounds and, like a lot of what you're talking about is really encouraging and reminding parents not to place unnecessary emotional burdens on their children through this difficult time. Absolutely. And it's not what we were taught as children, mm -hmm. because depending on what culture you, you know um, you come from, there's a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt in religion, a lot of guilt, you know. But now as we're raising our kids, we're becoming more conscious and we know what to say and what not to say. And of course I make mistakes just like everybody else, but I'm learning to catch them sooner and I'm learning to shut up sooner. Because sometimes, you know, Dr. Shafali said, 
the best parent, the best parenting advice is to, sh you know, shut your mouth. <laughs> I love Dr. <laughs> She's so right sometimes about that stuff. Just shut your mouth. <laughs> and so much could be said by not saying it. Yes. And letting your child come to their own conclusions and just being there as a support. You're so right. The other thing that she always says, which I know that you've said before too, is that a child still benefits from one conscious parent. They don't necessarily need two, although it would be ideal. So even if they have one, it's good. One is better than zero. One is all they need. Yes. So, and I think the more power you give your child to decide for themselves, the more powerful they feel. Mm -hmm. And the more powerful they feel, the better decisions they're gonna make. And the ultimate goal is, for anybody is, they want their kids to feel good about themselves. You know, people want their kids to succeed in school and um, to be happy. I mean, that's what parents want. And we can't always make that happen for our child. Right. But we can be there for them and support them yes. and not yes. dump our burdens onto their backs. Yes. Wow. This is awesome, Cheryl. So, I know that you'll be talking about this same topic at our Revolutionizing Parenthood conference. And I'm so excited for the people who will attend and listen in on your now digital workshop. So what will listeners, attendees be able to take away from your breakout session at the conference? Well, what I'd like to do is um, to educate parents about um, being negative with their child regarding the other parent. And then I'd also like to give them tools to be able to um, change the way they talk to their child, change the way they feel about the other parent. You know, we don't have to like our ex-spouse, but you know, we do have to have a certain respect because, and remember that that child is half the other partners. So we do need to have that respect. And I think the more respect we can hold for our partners, and even if we're not directly talking to him or her, I think it'll reflect in their parenting, and they will see it, and it'll reflect on your child. So basically, I want to um, teach parents how to have a more so have a more positive effect on their children, so the children can feel good about themselves, hmm. and that's what we want. That's beautiful. You are a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and inspiration for parents, Cheryl, and. I'm so glad that you spent this time with me talking about this really important, very common topic. And I'm really excited for our attendees to tune into your presentation because I know it's going to be such a beautiful gift for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. That wraps up today's episode. Wherever you are in this world, I hope that you make it a very peaceful day for yourself.